Right, this needs to be counterboard 11mm side into a depth of 22mm. So the first thing I'll do is touch off the tool. Touch off the tool there and set the zero. And also zero attention readout. Now zero on that face there as well. This cut takes the depth down to the eight mil we need. Turn that tip round. Right, that's bad. That's put a lot cleaner. That should be it. Oh, and that's uh, that's what I would call a dog's bollocks. That nice. And the important size is the size Bob, so much as that one. Been able to case a machine in the two two big slots in there, just for the to get a spanner in. As you can see I've managed to use the new miller and get one of the cutouts made. Unfortunately all the video I took of doing this uh, didn't work. I've actually I've lost a memory card, memory cards died. Uh, which means I've got the other side to do so I'll do that and I'll take a lot more video of the various steps and I'll put it in next week's next week's nightcap. I'm quite pleased with the miller the way it's performed. Um, one thing I've realised is you've really got to clamp things down tight. I need bigger V blocks on here. Uh, there's a lot of torque going through that cutter, but on the whole it, it's worked out quite nicely. Oh. The red stuff just blood because it's got real sharp edges on there. The little Half moon's just drop in there like that, and they can get a nut on there. Worked out quite nicely, I'm very pleased with that. Obviously, once the nasty rag's cutting off or taken off, as I've said, I'll spend a lot of time next week setting it up again. Probably go through the whole setup and remachine the machine the slot on that side for you. Enough room there to get the nut on and get a spanner in. Obviously, that's a curved slot. It would have been much easier to put a flat slot in as opposed to using a curve like that because it was. I had to be very, very gentle as I was doing that because obviously it's cutting over quite a big area. 
put his door in there. One thing I did notice when I was putting, it, putting this arm back onto the mill after cleaning all the dovetails up because it had stood for quite some time. The fit of the things is absolutely fantastic. It's a really, really well put together and well built machine. This PCR is really heavy. It took two of to, to lift it on. I'm sure you'll recognise this straight away as being a boiler water feed pump end cover or a boiler water feed pump cylinder head of a Sentinel steam wagon. It's a cast iron casting. It looks like it's had some damage done there and been welded up or brazed up. What I intend to do is replicate this. I'm going to cast one in brass. I'm going to give it a bit of clean up with a wire brush and see if I can actually just use this as a pattern. The only part I can see, I might have to put a bit of filler across the atom, blend that bit in, and obviously fill the holes in. I'll get some wire brushes, get a drill, clean it up, and we'll go about using this as a pattern to cast a new one. I think what's happened is this has obviously been frozen up and it's burst that end cap off. That's the threaded hole there which is actually designed to take a little valve, a little drain valve. It goes on the pump like that. The drain valve goes on there so you can drain the water out. As you can see it's been welded up with something. Looks like it's been brazed or bronze welded quite poorly as well. So it's been machined, it's had concentric grooves put in there. That's just to give it a better bite into the gasket. definitely been welded up. What I need to do was clean some of this weld off and then smooth it out. I'll probably use car body filler just to blend it all in. The same with the inside. I'll also fill these four holes in with car body filler. Before I do that I'll make a I'll make attempt to make a gasket to fit that. So I can mark the holes out on the the one I'm going to cast. That'll be a BSP thread in there. Quarter BSP, it looks like it is quarter BSP. Yeah. I think it's been looks like brass, so it's either been braised or been bronze welded. When I was an apprentice a few years ago, it was quite common to make gaskets. There's a couple of ways of marking gaskets out. One way is to use our gasket material and with semi-dirty hands, you can rub around the edge and you get an outline around the edge. Another way, the easiest way is to use a ball pin hammer and just use the edge of the part Top round it and eventually it. it cuts out an accurate an accurate gasket. Put a mark it. Put a mark there. That's where the little drain flange is. 
Now we need to cut out the, the holes for the bolts. For that we can simply use the, the ball end of the hammer. I've seen people pissed about award punches and hole punches trying to do this. And basically you've got to So I said this is not going to be a gasket, this is simply going to be used as a tool to mark off the, the hole centres. That goes like that. I'll be able to join all the join those up and pop mark the holes once we get the casting done. I've got a carbide burn me die grinder. As you well know I'm not the safety police, but when you're using one of these you must wear safety goggles, simple as that. All I do, I'll put a, a light skimmer body filler on this everywhere and just smooth it off. It'll, I can use it as a pattern just the way it is. It'll go into the sand that way and sand over the top. The only problem I'm going to have is that little bit there. Obviously it goes in that way, you turn it over and when it comes out of the sand it's going to catch on that lip there. I'll just grind that lip off. This bit here, that was what they call self core. That'll fill with sand and uh, we'll show you to make a, a decent copy of it I could do it in cast iron but it takes so much gas for me to weld cast iron it's just not practical and bronze would bronze will do just as well someone's obviously spent a lot of time brazing this up that's what's happened it's definitely it's definitely throws up kind of a thin water when it turns into ice the pressure it exerts is quite amazing I need, to, I need to say a special thanks uh, to Emmy and Philip R for bringing up the start of this week's programme or the start of this week's show or the start of this week's whatever you want to call it. Anyway, thanks once again. Thanks for watching, subscribing, clicking the like button and as always a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in towards my wife, Deb and my dad. Thanks very much.